Hi guys, welcome to the video. Today we are adding a new series about gilding our watercolour paintings. So using shimmer inks, gold and yeah, so... So this week's video began last week. It's a sweet little video about taking mushrooms and creating prints from them so yeah all the info about you know how to identify them and how to store them and uh, everything is in that video but today we're kind of taking this inspiration to a bit of a different level so we are using the mushrooms and looking at the uh, prints that we made from them so we actually created uh, like a living print so we take the mushroom and it, it's kind of all explained in the last video but we did do another one so I will kind of give you a little quick run through but you can see like just the different shapes and everything so this is one here we always have a little bit of trouble identifying them uh, we think this might be a velveteen oh, I think I put it on the screen in a minute yeah so it's either one of these we think it could be Velveteen Shield, yeah. So, if you have any uh, suggestions or ideas on that, let, let us know. But it's a very simple process of just snipping off the stalk and flipping it over onto a clean, you know, paper that you want to create the print on, and then leaving it uh, with something over it for, I think they say, you know, a few hours. We we generally leave it overnight, and then you get a really beautiful print. So you do want to do this not around food and you want to wash your hands thoroughly uh, you know, after you've used, used it because this is actual mushroom spores. You could grow mushrooms from it. So yeah, um, you want to be careful of that. But we usually do the first print. It's usually a really dense, beautiful print. And then we will move it to another paper. You can see we moved it to black paper. And then we do another print, which becomes like a finer, more detailed print. So quite nice and I really liked this one it came it was quite thick it was almost like a layer of um, like flocking so yeah really beautiful and it's just been inspiring me so this was kind of a project this is not like this is kind of my sister's project and it is you know not something I would necessarily think about uh, creating like these mushroom prints or paintings from them uh but i think i think we might have actually done a video where i did paint a mushroom last year but um yeah thinking about these and and the the beautiful patterns that they create i really wanted to explore that a little bit more in this video So the first thing that I did is take a sketchbook page, I uh, titled it the way I usually do and then I began by using a larger brush and just painting water in the shape of the mushroom. Then I've switched to a smaller brush and uh, then I am, so we're, we're using the mushroom cap for this process, like so we're, we're sort of putting it in the shape of the cap and then we are kind of doing the gills like the underside so we're painting those around into the water and I was just interested in exploring these different shapes and the ways that the uh, prints come out it's really really beautiful so as much as anything this video is also about sort of taking the inspiration that's around you things that you that inspire you and that you've been maybe thinking about creating but you're not sure if it would make a good subject um, you know and seeing that you can kind of explore that and start to form like different you know ways to create that so you might envision painting something and even I think the kind of the process of 
like validation like sometimes you're just not sure like you know would this is this something people paint and it doesn't necessarily have to be something that has been painted before or that is something that is a regular subject that people paint it you know that's kind of my challenge to you this week if there is something that you have been thinking about painting you maybe weren't sure um you know start making some sketches in your sketchbook about that thing and and you know see if there are possibilities and ways there that that um, could work so this is also a really nice process as far as um, if you want to just practice several different things so first of all we're using the wet and wet technique uh, we are letting that dry so once I do this full layer of this whole page I will use one color then I will drop in a few other colors and then we let that dry you can see here like here's a different shape I've left the hole in the middle and I've kind of made it an irregular uh, shape there so um, what am I saying so yeah you, you, you're practicing compositional elements um, the wet on wet technique softening edges glazing which means just letting this dry and then adding other layers on top of it uh, you know you're practicing whether you like mixing colors and color palettes you know whether you enjoy those color palettes and things like that it's just a really relaxing exercise and a great one also to do with kids Okay, so I have done the whole page here. I have let everything dry and now we are just going back in and doing the gilding part. So this is where we are taking some kind of shimmer ink or shimmer watercolor. In this case, I'm using the Sennelier silver ink. I really love this color. It's more like an antique silver, so it's quite beautiful. And I'm just using, you can see, a very tiny paintbrush. So I am not using my dip pen uh, I'm just using it to paint so in this one here I'm also going back in with like a darker brown and the way that I'm creating these gills from kind of what I've been looking at on the spore prints is creating lines with a little V somewhere in them and lines and broken lines as well so and yeah it's just it's quite a enjoyable way to think about and practice watercolor you're practicing lines softening those lines creating hard lines and yeah So on this one I used the, it's the Crema Incarnate number one. It's the kind of replacement for the Wallace and Seymour Chinabrese, which I really enjoyed. So this is uh, like a peach color. And then I've put bronze watercolor, uh, darker browns, some dusky pinks. This might be Isaro Rose that I've put, or Isaro Powder Pink that I've put over the top there. And you can see that I'm also brushing the color from the inside to the out or the outside to in and it also gives it a little bit of form and makes the edges look a little bit like they're cur curving and then again I am you know so doing that and then I'll either let that dry or because it's dry brush which means my brush is not very wet doesn't really take that long to dry so I can just sort of keep working around the piece and creating these lines and yeah you can see that it's a really nice way to explore also what colors will go over 
you know glazing is uh, an important technique to use in watercolor because the colors are so light so it's nice to see how different colors react over the top of each other and you can see that even the dark colors there I'm able to put lighter and darker colors over when I use like the shimmer ink so just a really nice way to you know work on work on uh, improving your watercolor there are a lot of different skills needed to kind of create um, paintings and even thinking about edges in these different ways and thinking even drawing just this is a, a fairly simple exercise we have circles concentric circles uh, you know simple lines but it's really important to work on like even the broken lines rather than you know if you have a tendency to draw quite a uh, firm like deep like you know some people like draw really dark lines that it's very difficult to erase and so this is a nice way to practice pressure with your brush strokes so you can apply less pressure and you know do the dry brushing you can apply less pressure and do the broken brush strokes so yeah it's, it's just really nice for those type of things so then once I finished that and that was kind of going to be the video and then I was thinking again about this concept of like creating paintings you know that aren't necessarily traditional in that sense and I started to make this really large spore print so I did the same kind of thing this is the crema incarnate number one it's it's more of a peach color than it's coming off in the video so I put that on there I, I didn't put water on I just painted in with this color some of the edges I softened I like wet my brush and kind of dried it and softened those edges some of them I let go hard and then I dropped in a bunch of other colors that those kind of smoky lavender taupe colors that I like um, a bit of shell pink in there and yeah just started to kind of create the basis for uh, this spore print so um, yeah then I kind of was turning that around because I actually liked it a different way than I had kind of put it um, where, I, where I thought I was going to start so also that's an interesting thing is just changing the artwork around to kind of see where you like it best and you can see that this is like a much uh, looser artwork than like some of the other ones I've done which which is just a really different way to paint and to think about you know what constitutes a painting so then I let that fully dry I think this is a different day and then I've come back in and I've started to map in some of these the lines the gills and in some of the mushrooms it's really interesting because they look almost a little bit like smocking I'll show you actually another clip in a different video yeah and so What is interesting about doing something like this and then blowing it up into a larger scale is you can kind of see where you would want to improve or different things that you can bring into the painting as well. So um, like for example, I, I left half of it because I wanted to remember that I really liked that base layer and then I wasn't exactly happy with how the uh, gills were forming on there like so I would think I think next time I would actually go through with a pencil and kind of mark in some of where I wanted to put put those in before I painted them and then you can see here at the end once the paint is dry I'm also coming back in with some colored pencils and adding some of that in as well so some more line work using colored pencils over watercolor is a nice way to deepen up some of those lines but still keep the softness the way that the pencil lays on the paper is still quite soft 
So this is, I'm just kind of showing you here like the difference between paintings and and showing you again this idea of it doesn't have to, what, what you want to paint doesn't have to necessarily be something that is out there, you know, you know that, you know, this and this and you have to paint like this. You can make um, paintings that you envision and that you kind of want to see you know put on the paper so I think that sometimes that is a, a bit of a block uh, yeah you know creatively there are all kinds of beautiful paintings to create and, and ways to um, you know create things so the book that I wanted to share for this video I have to uh, garden gardening kind of books that I really like for kind of art inspiration so there's a few more than these but these two I really enjoy so we'll just look at the Beatrix Potter one today and this is kind of an interesting as far as what we, we've been kind of talking about in the video so and it's also just a beautiful book and a really it's a really thorough but really lovely compilation of like her life and you've got you've got photos you've got paintings and excerpts from her journals and excerpts from letters that she sent to people so the research that has gone into sort of curating this book is really like it's it's really wonderful so uh, and the the photos that you, she has used like you can see how beautiful this is and how it already inspires uh, you know the wanting to paint the wanting to get out in the garden and paint and and also gardening and uh, you can see through this book how intertwined her life is with like her garden and it's not just like she did the uh, Peter Rabbit books for children as just like as a work and then she went home and she and you know that was the end of it I think that she did the books she got really quite sick when she was in London as a child and she had to go to the country all the time and I think that the books were a way for her to bring the country to other children maybe who couldn't get out of London uh, you know or didn't have access to these things like you can see there she's painting her door frame at Hilltop Cottage and so she it was very very intertwined with her her garden her painting um, you know painting her home painting what was in her garden and it was something that she really loved so it you know it was in all aspects of her life which is quite beautiful and it's I think what comes through in the little books and I think it's a really good reminder too to create what you're drawn to and what you enjoy so you know there weren't other children's books or paintings about these little rabbits with you know wearing the blue jacket but that is how she felt about her garden and about the little animals in her garden and that's what she wanted to share so yeah just a really lovely kind of thought and and just a beautiful book it's it's so inspiring like the all the different little maps and yeah I really love it and I know that some of you live quite close to the Lake District or in the Lake District which is really amazing and just a really beautiful place to be so yeah thank you for sharing all of those kind of things like I really appreciate hearing you know where you are and how the like videos might relate or not but yeah so I hope you enjoy this and I'm, I'm glad that you're enjoying the um, adding the books in I think it's it always takes me a little bit longer but I'm I really enjoy uh, yeah just adding that in in the end you could see the mushrooms there that she had painted so that is a another way you could take the mushrooms and paint them and then also gild the little uh, markings on that way so yeah also this Saturday's video is going to be the bean paints one but it may not quite be finished so this one has taken a little bit longer uh, than I had first thought so um, yeah it might not be out till next Tuesday or Wednesday we'll see how it goes but it is also coming along really nicely so you can see at the one of the things that I really liked at the end of this book too uh, and you can see she's using watercolor and ink as well and 
they they give you like some further reading and you can see that a lot of these things are taken from her letters or from her journal and then they also have an index of the plants that she grew in her garden and like where they found that information so it would have been in letters that she'd written again or in her journal which is just really lovely so yeah I think that's everything I will I hope that you've all gotten the paints by now and that you enjoy them and um, thank you to those of you who have um, let me know as well so I really love hearing how you're enjoying them and I feel like there's always I try so hard with shipping I feel like there's always one incident so that is cleared up so I hope you um, yeah thank you for that as well and um, okay so that's it guys I will see you in the next video this was a little dove that visited it's just fledgling so it's just I think this was the first day that it was actually out of the nest so yeah um, I'll see you in the next video bye Thank you.